another day, another location. We're just keeping everybody on we're their on toes. We're quite an adventure here. Yeah, I we think. were in Tampa. Then we did New Jersey with the Jets location. Now we're out here in the Giants yeah, location. No truth probably to the rumor that we're going up to Buffalo tomorrow for a walkthrough. I'm guessing there's... Yeah, I mean, why don't we just keep just going different places around the country. We'll just take it's this tour. tour. Yeah, we'll just get tour. on the bus and go on the road here. So again, we had the joint practices with the Jets yesterday, but then today they were not going to be doing joint practices. The Giants were nice enough to allow us their beautiful facility here. And uh, so first of all, I'm sure everybody's wanting to hear there's been a lot of news out there about yesterday's practice. It was a eventful one in good, bad and middle ground ways. So yeah. uh, let's start with, of course, the injury news. That is the we'll get That's the bad the out of the way. Uh, tell us what we know at this point about the injuries that were uh, happening in practice. So Russell Gage went down early in practice in the seven on seven period. It was non contact injury. It was his right knee. He had to be carted off. He was clearly very upset as he was being carted off. The Buccaneers have not officially said anything about how severe the injury is or what it could cost him. But he obviously, we've seen this before. We, you could see from his reaction and the reaction of people around him that it's, as Coach said, pretty serious. So if for some reason he has to go on injured reserve now before the regular season starts, he would be out for the season. Yeah, and of course, we, you know, thoughts and prayers out to Russell and what a great, nice guy and just you hate to see anybody go down mm -hmm. like that. But of course, it's our job to talk about the ramifications for yeah. the Buccaneers and football side. So what is this going to mean for this wide receiver room and, yeah. and how many guys are making the roster who maybe now gets a spot that wouldn't have before? Yeah, I think ramifications is a good word because we don't want to treat it like it's a silver lining or anything. It's just flat out bad news. But the result of it is that some other receivers are going to need to step up. And other than David Moore, a receiver who has uh, about four or five years with Seattle worth of experience and some experience with this offense, the rest of the group is all first and second year players who have virtually no NFL experience. So, um, you know, it's a little hard to know which one, who to count on from among those groups. But one thing we did see yesterday was that sixth round draft pick, Trey Palmer, seems to be coming into his own. Mike Evans says it was the best practice he's ever had. And we didn't see every single catch, but we certainly saw the big one, which was like a 50, 60 yard bomb down the middle uh, from Kyle Trask. And it was when he was being covered by Sauce Gardner. That's, that, that's, that's the, big the news even there, better right? part of it. Now, as, as uh, Chris Godwin explained, it was a tough assignment for Sauce Gardner because they were in cover zero, so he had no help whatsoever. And Trey, per Trey Palmer is just a blazer. He so is. if he got behind him, I think very few cornerbacks would have been able to keep up on that one. Which but is still. Yeah, that's great news for this draft pick for the this wide receiver room that we never want to see an injury, but I do feel like of the whole team, if you were going to have an injury at a position, this one feels in some ways like the deepest where it might be you never it's want to deep, say that it's it's but not it's not experienced right and so at least you do we've been talking about how crowded this room is all camp of how many guys that mike evans talked about how it's almost a bad thing because they were going to know that they were going to have to cut someone yeah, yeah. that they felt like really deserved to be on this team and on this roster so at least if it, you're going to have an injury it felt like a position room that did have a lot of depth well it certainly creates some opportunities and uh you know there's a lot of guys like devin Tompkins has looked really good so it's just what make what i wonder about it is it seemed like when they were running three receiver sets with Mike and Chris and Russell Gage after he came back from his hamstring injury in camp. Those three were traveling together a lot as a three receiver package and seemed like Russell Gage was getting a lot of work in the slot, which really would have helped our this plan we have that the coaches apparently have of using Chris Godwin more on the outside than he has the last few years. Does that change that? Do we need Chris Moore in the slot now? Do we have another viable slot receiver? Is it Devin Tompkins? I don't know if Trey Palmer is a slot receiver. He seems like an outside burner, right. but I guess we're going to find out in the coming weeks what they're going to do in the slot. So what were the other big takeaways that you had from the practice besides the fact yeah. that it was uh, rather chippy? Yeah. Well, you want to talk about that? Well, yeah. Like, Why not? It's there a lot were, of fun. <laughs> were quite, there had to be at least four or five, I guess, skirmishes? I, yeah, I probably would put the number even higher, really? honestly. Yeah, it was it was crazy. Yeah, Mike Evans said that after practice. I think he said he's never experienced as many yeah. skirmishes in a practice yeah, as this one. Yeah, he said he's done a lot of joint practices, which is true because he's been in the league for about a decade now. But he said this was the most he's ever had in one practice. But he also said, and it was pretty clear, that they were all pretty short. I mean, they got broken up pretty quickly. I don't think there was any real terrible lingering hard feelings when the whole practice was over. But, yeah, there were some guys that were – pretty intense out there mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of, I guess you could call it if you coach didn't put a positive spin on it, he said we don't want that in our game 
But if you were wanting to put a positive spin on it, it you know, there's some there's people some out there, there's some pretty good competition going on. And so what about that competition part of it stood out to you in terms of a lot of times in these joint practices, you know, you get to see their ones against your ones mm -hmm. on both sides of the ball. And so what did you feel like between, you know, we had kind of the our offense on this field, yeah. our defense on this field. What were some things that stood out to you on either side? Yeah, and so you're bouncing back and forth trying to get a little look at both. Um, Which I missed every big moment, by the way. <laughs> Whatever field I was looking at, all of a sudden, I didn't thing? see no. that. I in every Did single the fight started on the Anthony other field. Nelson pick six? Nope, I was at the other okay, field. It's incredible. So I need to not watch from now on because apparently <laughs> that's the key to things not well, happening. Well, one thing that was kind of the buzz on the field where the Bucks off I mean the Bucks defense was going against the Jets offense was and of course, this is a little bit subjective because nobody's going to hit the quarterback, right? But it did appear as if we were frequently getting defenders, pass rushers into their backfield and harassing Aaron Rodgers and making him throw the ball away more than he wanted to. Um, that was a good sign for the Bucks, And that was without um, uh, Jose Ramirez wasn't practicing. Yaya Diaby practiced early but didn't do the team drills. So you were a little bit shorthanded in that group. But as Coach has said, he thinks – there's a lot of NFL talent in that group. So even without those guys, they had enough good pass rushers to really make an impact. And, you know, of course, you have to look at the other side and go, maybe the Jets are having some problems with their offensive line. I know um, they Mackay Becton isn't necessarily coming along as quickly as they'd hoped after missing most of the last two years. And so there's been a little bit of a shakeup on their offensive line. They're still trying to figure it all out. But still, it's it was a good look for the Buccaneers. Yeah, and how about on the Bucks' offensive side of things? Well, um, Chris Godwin said afterwards, and this is another thing that's a little hard to tell, but he said the running game, you know, you can't tell for sure because they're not tackling in most of the drills. Every run looks like Every it Every run looks for, really yeah. good. But there were some that it did look like they were blocked up really nicely. Early on, Rashad White looked very good. I saw some nice, uh, what looked like pretty good runs by Keyshawn Vaughn as well. And and Chris Godwin said, it. he, he acknowledged that you can't tell for sure, but he said it kind of looked like the running game was going well. We were getting a hat on a hat. So mm -hmm. I guess what that means is when you watch it, on tape, you see the blockers going to where they're supposed to go and, and having enough blockers to open a seam. Yep. All right. Well, that is going to do it for us on this training camp report presented by Ticketmaster from yet another location. <laughs> so that is actually going to do it for us on the training camp reports because training camp is officially over. These joint practices are officially over. So we'll be back to sort of our regularly scheduled programming. We hope you guys enjoy the preseason game this weekend and go Bucks.